Hi, so I was going through the uh, module and preparing for my upcoming first edition uh, uh, campaign. Got a kickoff on the campaign, got, uh, got them started. They're at level one, working their way through, kind of planning out. This has been my capstone adventure here is the uh, Ghost Tower of Inverness. One of the things I was doing is I was going through not only my first level um, campaign stuff, but kind of looking forward ahead a little bit, is looking at some of these monster entries in, for example, the Ghost Tower of Inverness here. We have various monster entries. Um, there's, uh, like I said, wandering monsters. There's your a wandering monster table. For example, here there's one for the upper runes, uh, one for the dungeon level. And then some various details on these monsters and how to kind of read those. I thought I'd kind of go through a little bit upon how this, uh, um, or what all this means. Because if you're coming, especially from like 5th edition, most of the stuff uh, that's in these tables don't really correspond to 5th edition at all. Uh, it's pretty pretty much uh, kind of redone. Um my uh, monster manual has a missing page, a photocopy of it, but uh, I've got a page torn out at some point. But here we go. Um, basically, the, a monster uh, is, is, can be anything within the uh, within the D and D um, book. It doesn't necessarily mean a a dragon or a vampire or a skeleton or a kobold it means anything that you're going to be uh, going up against encountered it could be hostile it could be human it could be a beast um and until you've kind of figured out if it's a monster or not then uh then or it's an enemy then you're just basically you kind of consider it to be a monster or some kind of hostile um so it kind of spells it out here, too, in the Monster Manual, that um, the secondary usage of the term is in the usual sense, a horrible or wicked creature of some sort. Uh, thus a monster is encountered during the course of a dungeon expedition and is discovered to be an evil high priest who just might turn out to be a monster in the other sense as well. Uh, now it, however, that despite this terminology, humans and such kin as dwarves, elves, gnomes, half-elves, and halflings always use the matrix for humans when attacking, even if such humans were encountered as monsters. So if you would encounter that evil priest, they're not a monster, per se. They would still use the combat tables for a uh, cleric in that example. Or if they're a fighter, they'd use the combat table for a fighter. Um, kind of looking at these uh, entries, we have like, uh, where's a good one here? We have a centipede giant. Shows armor class 9, movement 15, hit dice a quarter, hit points 2 each. A number attacking is 1, uh, no save versus poison, add a plus 4 die. So if we kind of look look at this, uh, frequency, a number appearing, armor class, movement, hit dice, percentage and layer, treasure type. Now not all of this is going to be like in a little uh, um, quick reference like, like this here is. I guess it's telling you it's a quarter hit dice. You're like, well, what's a hit dice? A hit dice is an eight-sided dice. In uh, first edition, you don't... No, any time that you would be told to roll a hit dice, you would take an eight-sider, roll a hit dice. In this case, this particular monster I just rolled for would have two hit points. Um, sometimes it's two hit dice, so this would be 13 hit points. Sometimes it's four hit dice plus another four, or, you know, whatever the, uh, whatever the range might be. Um, this one would be nine in that particular example if we're adding another four it would have been 13 but um if you look at the full entry like in the monster manual for example the centipede come in a little bit on that so the centipede we have a giant frequency they're common okay number appearing is 2 to 24 that does not mean that you're going to encounter 24 of them all at once you might uh, but it just kind of gives the uh, DM just kind of a guide. 
that uh, you normally will encounter more than one. You might encounter up to a couple dozen. Um, that's more of a guide. I mean, for the particular campaign, maybe it's uh, lots of centipedes, so maybe you would have more. Armor class is nine. Uh, movement's 15. Hit dice is a quarter. So if one hit dice is um, eight sides, then a quarter of a hit dice is to two sides, basically. Um, and like in this case here, they uh, told us to use um, two hit points for, for him, even though he might have only had one. They told us to go ahead and give each one two. Um, and that's what that module called out. Uh, just kind of going through this a little bit more here. We have percentage and layer. They don't really don't have a layer, so you're not going to probably find them in their layer. Um, so because of that, they're not going to have a treasure. You'd still earn experience points for killing one, but uh, you're not going to get any treasure. They have one attack. Uh, the damage per attack is none. However, they have a special attack of poison, which is what it was mentioning back here. That damage of none that I mentioned, but uh, there's a save versus poison at plus four, or you just die. Um, so it's one of those you save or die type of situations. And it's not super uncommon in this edition to have those types of situations. Uh, so a special attack is poison, it has no special defense, magic resistance, just like anything else. Intelligence, doesn't have any intelligence. Alignment's neutral. Uh, size, are smaller, about a foot or so long. And they don't have any psionic or mental attacks or defenses. Now, and of course, they have a little bit of a write-up. These nasty creatures are found nearly everywhere. They are aggressive and rush forth to bite their, their prey, injecting poison into the wound. But in many cases, the poison is weak and not fatal. Add plus four to the saving throw die roll. Also, as a centipede is small, it is less likely to resist attacks, which allow it a saving throw, a negative one on the die. Um, and then centipedes come in various colors. So if you were to encounter one of these and get bit by one of these, instead of losing hit points, there's a possibility that uh, it could just kill you. But uh, probably not. Hopefully not. But it could happen. Now compare that to, say, some of these other creatures here. And we just look at another one of the entries here, like the Chimera. Uh, frequency is rare. Percentage is going to be found in the layers, like 40%. That's going to have a treasure type of F. So you check the treasure table if you found it in its lair. Now the Chimera here gets six attacks. Number of attacks is six. It has... Damage per attack is 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1 to 4, 2 to 8, and 3 to 12. Um, it's got a breath weapon, and for a special, doesn't have any special defenses. It's regular magic. It's uh, semi-intelligent. Its alignment's chaotic evil. Uh, size is large, about 4 foot across. Uh, psionics, no psionics, but then it's got a nice little write-up here about all these, how these, all these attacks would work. So it's got three heads, it's got claws, um... The goat head has horns, the lion head has jaws and sharp teeth, the dragon's head, um, and if, it's, if a chimera desires 50% chance, this dragon can breathe fire. Uh, so the goatish parts are there black, and it kind of gives you more of a description of what it might look like there. So that's what that, kind of what those entries there look like. Um, if we kind of compare them back to here then, um, and actually, here's something that's kind of interesting, too, is how movement works. Um, it could have fl flying speed. It could have a swimming speed. It could have a burrowing speed. It could have a web speed. And it all depends upon the little uh, um, markers that are around it. And it could have more than one speed because it could have, like, a flying speed and a speed on a web. Or it could have a swimming speed and a burrowing speed or a flying speed. And you would see those all kind of marked out like that in various um, in various ways. Uh, see, we went through number of attacks, damage per attack, special attacks like dragons, breath weapons, special defenses could be uh, some kind of special def defense that the creature might might uh, possess. 
Magic resistance indicates the percentage chance of a spell failing in the monster's presence based on the spell being cast by a magic user of 11th level. And it's and then adjusted upwards or downwards 5% for each level, uh, below 11th level. Uh, thus, a magic resistance of 95% means that a 10th level magic user has no possibility of affecting the monster with a spell, while a 12th level magic user has a 10% chance. So even if a spell does take effect on a magic-resistant creature, the creature is entitled to the normal saving throw after that. So you see if the spell works at all, and then you see if, if, they, if they save, should the spell actually, actually work. And there's a chance that uh, the spell might not work at all. So note also that the magic resistance of a creature has an effect on certain existing spells, such as Hold Portal, where it indicates a probability of the magic resistance shattering the existing spell. Now here's something else that's kind of fun here, is the intelligence. And I've kind of mentioned some of these intelligence uh, creatures had um, no intelligence for the centipede or like a low intelligence for the uh, chimera. Uh, so basically, it gives us here our 0 to 21 intelligence uh, um, range. And 0, there's no intelligence. That'd be nil, like the centipede. Uh, 1 would be animal, kind of an instinctual. And it kind of goes up. That 8 to 10 is an average human intelligence. So the chimera low intelligence is a little below an average human um, and 11's very intelligent, uh, going up to 15, 16, exceptionally intelligent. Then we got genius all the way up to godlike intelligence at 21 there. Uh, finally, the, or not finally, but next, the alignment shows a characteristic bent of a monster as to law and chaos, good or evil, or towards a neutral behavior. Um, doesn't mean every creature's like that, but it kind of gives you an idea of how that uh, particular creature just generically is going to uh, be approached. It doesn't mean there aren't any creatures out there that are outside of that alignment, but generally speaking, that's um, what would be expected. Size is smaller than a human. Uh, medium is man size, or M is man sized, about five to seven feet tall, and L is larger. And then, of course, the psionics are the attack defense modes, if they have any. And uh, yeah, I love how it says, where necessary, a sketch of each monster is shown. However, there's lots of places where there's no monster shown. And I mean, there's lots of places where they are, don't uh, take me around. But there's lots of places where there's no monster shown. And it's really, you might not know what a... Uh, some of these the dinosaurs, for example, are not that you couldn't possibly go look them up, um, but there's definitely uh, times when this, uh, there's missing art, we'll say, in the book here. I mean, yes, everybody knows what a dog is, or probably. Uh, most people probably know what a dolphin is. But some of these creatures here, it is interesting that they did not include some of the art um, for them. But uh, nicely enough, though, they did include them for most of the creatures. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea. And, and a nice little black and white sketch that uh, you could, you could, uh, if you have any, like, art skill at all, you could take a piece of paper and trace over it, if nothing else, if you wanted to, uh, to uh, do that. So it's kind of a nice little, the Invisible Stalker, of course, was, too, was a camera shy. Here's something that I find interesting, though, like the Irish deer. I'm not sure what an Irish deer looks like myself. I would just call it a deer. But but uh, it's moose-sized, so of the, uh, um, of, uh, so, yeah. It's just one of those interesting things. Lizards, they don't really give you an example. But uh, most of it they do, but like uh, here, a slithering tracker. What would that, that you know, the only thing that would kind of have to kind of go off is that, but. And of course, this isn't the only monster manual. This is your first monster manual, but there's a couple more. There's monster manual two, which gives you some more creatures, some more creatures and some more art. A um, little bit, maybe better explanation of the breakdown of some of these uh, areas here uh, that, uh, you know, including some of the special entries, uh, 
the plane, the creature's plane of origin, um, things like that kind of get added in. Uh, some of, this, of that psionic stuff gets uh, built into, into this particular one, so you can um, reference that more easily. Uh, some of the extra specials, like some dexterity scores and, and things like that, that a, uh, that a thief that they get your party might encounter would have. Um, so you don't have to look that up right away. And then otherwise, it's the same type of deal. Um, it's just, just a listing of creatures, potentially um, pot potential monsters. Uh, more than likely, most of them are going to be monsters. That uh, um, here's a uh, Modrons, for example, here in the second monster manual. Um, so yeah, there's uh, lots of fun little things in here. In the back, there are various. Uh, Random encounter tables and level and frequency at that level. So you just kind of like start to plan your encounters a little bit better. And then finally there's the Fiend Folio, which is once again more monsters. Um, more monsters, more monsters, more monsters. Uh, it's the same type of information right up front that was in the first monster manual. And then it breaks right into the various types of monsters. And most of the monsters, even through 5th edition, kind of most of them trace their roots way back here to these uh, these books here. There's a few things that aren't in these books. But most of the creatures are somewhere within these books here. So um, that's why I figured like converting a campaign from, say, 1st edition to 5th edition or another edition instead of trying to you know convert the monsters just kind of look them up i would say just look them up look them up in the edition that you're wanting to play make sure that they're pretty much the same and you'll find that they will be in their abilities and, and so forth and you can kind of just swap them out i mean you might discover oh i need to add a couple more kobolds or i might need to reduce some damage or something I'll, along the way but for the most part uh they're system to system they're pretty uh pretty interchangeable if you just grab the grab the name and then just use the use the level or use the creature out of the edition that you wanted to play so like here if i were to play this in fifth edition for example i wouldn't make a whole lot of changes to these tables i would just go find these creatures in my fifth edition book and just run with it and if i needed to make some fine tweaks i would but for the most part, I found you really don't have to make too many changes. There are some conversion guides out there. Uh, basically, it turns these into what's in the 5th edition books. So, Or if you find something that's uh, just not out there somewhere, you can, uh, you know, can kind of go through those uh, conversion steps. But uh, that's kind of what I had today as far as the um, monsters and the monster manual and just kind of going through a little bit about how all that's put together. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.